Do you like anime? Do you like stickers? If the answer to either of those questions were yes, or you're just an otaku like me, go check out sukawaii.com. Here, you can look at all of these beautiful stickers and other anime merch and accessories. They've got My Hero Academia. They've got Seven Deadly Sins. They've got Jujutsu Kaisen. They've even got little cuties like this. Who is that? I don't know, but I'm buying them. I bought some myself and they're amazing and adorable. Here, look, using the link in the description below, use promo code BIZARRE5 for 5% off of your purchase. That's promo code BIZARRE5 for 5% off of your purchase. I mean seriously, look how cute! Better now. An Izuku Midoriya X Listener Fanfic by Goldfish Bowl. Before we begin, I do want to issue a trigger warning. This story is really heavy and dark, so listen at your own risk. It does deal with thoughts of suicide and self-harm. But anyways, let's go ahead and begin with the story. Everything felt really cold. Like ice was sliding across your skin, but really it was just the fan breezing past your naked thigh where your blanket had up and left you. Your bed was empty. Izuku must have gone to work already. You recap your dream lazily, leaning against the headboard of your bed after drawing the blinds down with your remote-controlled window screens. You rest your chin on your knees and mull the dream over. It's the same every night now. The same stab and drown dream that plagued you. The world was weighing down on your shoulders. And another weight is exactly what you needed, even after you gained a few pounds the last month. You couldn't even tell if you were being sarcastic or not, since you were a sadomasochist at heart, a total workaholic, and you tried your best to be a good girlfriend, but every time Izuku had to come home and you were still doing laundry, it felt insulting, like it wasn't your best that day. You could easily overwork yourself, leaving dinner on the table to be reheated, not eating and leaving it for Izuku while you fell asleep on the couch with g Easy running through your speaker, or a movie playing on the TV while you folded clothes or did paperwork. You often woke up in your bed alone, and fell asleep alone. You swore Izuku was like Doctor Strange from comic books with this job, constantly on call as a chest surgeon but nearly destroying his nerves and his hands when he was younger. His hands were large and scarred from tons of accidents he wasn't proud of. He had a habit of breaking his hands while trying to karate chop a pile of bricks. Granted, this is when he was 10 and wanted to be the world's best kung fu artist. But now he was a fucking chest surgeon and did heart transplants like the good fucking boy he was. When he wasn't on call, he was with you. And when he wasn't with you, he was on call. And in the some chance that he wasn't on either, he went to the gym constantly and worked his ass off to maintain his health and keep a stunning physique. While you didn't go to the gym and you weren't a doctor. Nope, you were just an author, a photographer, and a deadbeat artist. Izuku was the definite breadwinner out of the two of you. You scratch at the underside of your breast and readjust the green sweater you wore before hauling your ass out of bed and taking a walk to the bathroom. Only halting your steps altogether when you passed in front of a long mirror you kept at the end of the room. You turned to touch the rolls of your stomach and large breasts, squeezing them in your hand and gripping at the soft flesh of your ass. It wasn't in a teasing motion, but one of disgust. You pinched and poked and prodded at yourself. You continued your journey to the bathroom and closed the door, staring at the vanity mirror. Your eyes became glossy as you yanked your sweater and top off over your head and threw it down, grabbing the flesh of your neck and pulling at it while grimacing in both pain and displeasure with your body. You take a strand of your hair in your hands and begin to tug on it gently, watching as a few strands of dull and different shade of hair color fall into your palm. You shook your hand to rid yourself of the hair. Your gaze caught a glimpse of the scars and pink marks on both your wrists and forearms, the same with your legs. Your inner thighs and the tops of them were in little scars from scrapes and cuts you had collected over the years. Izuku loved your scars. He would give every single one of them kisses and always say the same thing. Each scratch and bump and cut is just a reminder of how strong you are, that you live through your suffering. I love them, and I love you. But he wasn't here to kiss away your pain and fear now. He wasn't there to stop you from doing anything rash, he just wasn't there. It made you angry and it made you sad. You were so alone in your mind with only your thoughts to talk to you, and none of them were good thoughts that could whisk you away from sadness and pain. It happened too fast and too soon. You felt numb even as the box cutter dug away at your scars, opening them up again and again until you slumped against the wall and cried. You threw the blade away from you and it landed with a sharp end at the wall. A few shampoo bottles clattered into the tub with a loud thud, and then a voice stilled your sobs and sniffles. Your name? That you, honey? It was Izuku. He was home. 
He was there, and he was about to walk into the bathroom and see you. He would shake his head in disappointment and pick you up and take care of you and scold you at the same time, and you just didn't want to be scolded that day. You managed a voice as best you could. Yeah, I'm just in the bathroom. You crawl over to the door and lock it just in time you hear him step into the bedroom. You wipe your eyes and rinse your aching arms under the warm water you turned on, the comforting liquid washing the bloody mess away. You took the box cutter out of the wall and rinsed that off before storing it behind the toilet seat. You put your sweater on again and pulled the sleeves down to cover your hands, giving your sweater pause before you stepped out and saw him changing. You flush and stand shyly behind the bathroom door while he turns and smiles at you. Hi, baby, he coos, waving his hand and beckoning you towards him. You step awkwardly and finally meet him. He wraps his arms around your waist and lifts you into a gentle hug. You wrap your arms and bare legs around him and snuggle into his neck with no means of letting go. Izuku, I missed you. You mumble. He can now feel the wetness of your cheeks on his neck, and his gaze softens slightly as he holds you. He sits himself down on the bed while you straddle his lap and refuse to look at him, almost hiding as he whispers words of affection to you. He feels warmth slip down his back, a little lower from where your hands are on his back. He pulls away and takes your arms in his hands. You freeze as his thumb grades the wetness of your forearm. The blood had seeped into your green sweater, the liquid creating dark splotched lines against the woolly fabric. It was unfortunate to you that Izuku hadn't failed to notice the discoloration. Your name? Again? He whimpers, his breath catching in his throat. As soon as the silent tears you hold become body-racking sobs as he held you, pressing his face into your hair and rubbing your knuckles, and the routine appears again as he whispers, scolding of how you can't do that to yourself or how you should have called him instead, but you can only shake your head and sob incoherent babbles. He tells you that you're so beautiful and special and everything that I could ever have or want or need. I can't stand to see you beat yourself up over this. It messes everyone up. Just let me help you, baby. Please, I can do this. Your tears are now gone and you're dry heaving, panting and trying to breathe as he carries you to the bathroom to stitch up your arms just like he did last time. I'll try, Izu. I'll try. You sniff. I love you so, so much, baby. Do your best. I'm here. He promises. You find that your breathing is steady as he cleans you up and presses kisses everywhere in all the places that you poked and pinched, whispering, I love you. After every kiss, he leaves on your skin. I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of dark Izuku ex listener fanfic. I want you guys to know that no matter what you're going through, whether it be at home, in school, at work, regardless of where it's at, you're loved and appreciated. And even if you don't feel that way yourself, I promise you that I care about you. And there is at least one person out there who cares about you. And even just that one person is enough. Anyways, my name is Bizarre, and I'll see you weebs in the next video. Cue the outro.